and landing. Joining us now from Dating Associates is our political consultant with our state of San Diego, John Dadian. John. Good morning. My friend, it is uh, great to talk to you here on the on the uh, post-Labor Day, uh, the aftermath of Labor Day. And we've got a couple of things going on here in San Diego that continue to captivate. This The minimum wage story has been really a, 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 an ongoing uh, uh, debate, I suppose, for this entire year. And now that it passes with the ordinance, now there's this referendum. So the people, the business community is trying to gather up 50,000 signatures in order to call for a referendum on this thing. And I guess I have to ask, John, do they stand a chance? Where are we now? Do, we, do they stand a chance at this? Oh, sure. They, they certainly stand a chance as far as getting on the ballot. Um, and then the, you pointed out that we've been talking about it for a year, so we're going to go through another year and a half, almost two years, uh, once it qualifies for the ballot, because it'll probably go on the June of uh, 2016 uh, ballot. Um, and I think uh, you mentioned 50,000. I think that's the target they're shooting for right. to get enough signatures, but 34,000 is uh, the, the requirement. Now, that's a, that, that seems like a significant amount above and beyond what the requirement is. And you and I have talked about this before that this is to make sure that they don't have any problems with an audit. But I mean, they're they're trying to hit about 50 percent more than what they're required to do. Is that overshooting it? Wouldn't they be OK if they just came out with, say, 40,000 signatures? Well, it's, it, again, it's all this rule in the book. There's no problem with shooting too high as long as you make that minimum. I mean, again, the alternative is worse that if they missed it for any reason, you know, it, this really is a one-shot deal. If they if they don't make the minimum uh, required signatures, then this minimum wage does go into effect. All right. So if it if they do get the minimum signatures, and the minimum wage deal does not go into effect until there's a referendum, what exactly would the referendum do? Would the referendum put a stop to the ordinance, or would the referendum um, would it would it change the way we look at this? Is it base? Is this referendum on the ordinance? Is this basically our vote? to say yay or nay on the minimum wage. It's it's our vote to say yay or nay on the council action, which was to implement a, a, a three tier raise in the minimum wage. Okay. So it, it, it would it would uh, stop the council action, but then the council could go back and work with the community, uh, with the business community, and possibly still address the minimum wage at some future date. But it would rescind the council action if it passed on the ballot. John, because this is a city ordinance and it's not a voter approved minimum wage increase, and, and I'm asking you, and, I'm, and I'm, I don't mean to blindside you here, and, I, and I'm going to ask you a legal question on this. I was taking a look at all the different incentives that we're offering in California to some of these companies we don't want to see go, specifically Tesla and the Gigafactory. We say, look, come here and we'll pass these taxes and, and we'll, uh, we'll give you these exemptions and we'll, we'll offer you this deal and that deal. Because this is a minimum wage increase that's not voted on, is it something that the city can offer to be flexible on for economic development purposes? Say somebody wants to open a distribution center in San Diego, and uh, but they don't want to pay eleven fifty an hour minimum wage. Could the city come back and say, all right, well, that's all right. We'll give you an exemption for $10 an hour as long as you bring your 4,000 jobs here. I'm assuming not, because, again, business incentives as far as tax breaks are formed differently because it's formed usually uh, to address a certain industry or a certain type of skill, et cetera. Uh, I'm assuming if they try to do something like that, uh, businesses that were paying a minimum wage would be, you know, rushing down to court in two seconds. So, um, again, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm, I'm assuming that's what the process would be. Well, I think they would go nuts, that's for sure. Uh, I don't have any doubt about that. They would go nuts about it, for sure. Yeah. We, we had an interesting twist yesterday that the mayor of Los Angeles proposed a minimum wage, and he's proposing it much higher than what the uh, city of San Diego is proposing. His proposal is thirteen fifty. So the first thing that struck me, Chris, is watch the pro minimum wage people in San Diego say, "Hey, look, we're not even proposing what what will be the highest in the country." So I think they're going to use that as a straw man argument to say, "Look, ours isn't really that bad." I think you're probably right, but John, are we likely to see what's going on in Los Angeles? Is that going to mirror? Or what we had happen here, and that is that they aim for something over $13 only so they can negotiate it back to 11 something? 
And that's exactly uh, be the interesting thing to follow. Um, again, 1325 uh, would be the highest in the country, and I've got to assume there's going to be some wiggle room. Again, you got a relatively new mayor up there, similar to, to our new mayor down here, uh, but it's Democrat-controlled up there, unlike our Republican mayor who had a fight with the council. So I, I, I think there is some room for negotiation, but it won't be as much of a battle as it was down here. All right. It'll be very interesting to watch that because then once, let's suppose that Los Angeles goes to 13 and a quarter an hour, is Todd Gloria next year going to say, you know, that minimum wage I proposed just isn't high enough and then and then go back at it for an even higher minimum wage increase? I would not be surprised. All right. Very interesting. John Dadian from Dadian Associates with our weekly State of San Diego address. And John, thanks so much. I appreciate the insight. All right, Chris. Thanks, pal. Always a pleasure having you on. Uh, always, always a pleasure. We're going to talk. In fact, 